Welcome to another P. Probst production. Today we'll be exploring the Oneida community and its lesser known but key role in American history. Popular belief says that radical utopian communities are completely disassociated from the time period they inhabited. However, these groups oftentimes give us historians an inside look at the hopes and fears of American society during the period they existed. In this way, the ideals of the Oneida community give us insight into how the American mindset was reacting to the immense changes of the mid-1800s. The Oneida community was started by John Humphrey Noyes. Mr. Noyes attended the Yale Divinity School, where he came to the conclusion that believers entered a state of perfection and sinlessness upon conversion to Christianity, a theory he entitled Perfectionism. Perfectionism was the most extreme amongst many counter-theories to the widely publicized Calvinistic doctrine, which stated that humans are naturally corrupt and evil. In a time where the environment was being eaten up by human expansion and rapid urbanization had left some in squalor and others in splendor, perfectionism represented the hope that humans weren't truly evil and that there was an easy way out of sin. However, this didn't stop him from being booted out of school for presenting his unorthodox ideas. After being denied ordination, Mr. Noyes preached perfectionism, gathered up some followers in Vermont, and started the Putney Association, where we can see some of his first theories come to life. The Putney Association was run off the principle of true communism, in which all possessions were shared, and items were bought and sold off of demonstrated community need. This was very much the opposite of the capitalism-obsessed, free-for-all industrial boom that had swept over America during this time. The use of communism in the Oneida community reveals an American fear that this new age of industry would polarize the classes, allowing some to get richer faster than ever before, while leaving the majority struggling for minimum wage. However, it was one of his other theories, complex marriage, that got him chased out of Vermont on charges of adultery. Complex marriage was the idea that every man in the Putney Association was married to every woman, and every woman was married to every man. This was one of the most profound ideas of both the Putney Association and later the Oneida community, because not only does it reveal the changing American mindset towards the acceptance of a less stringent sexual code, but it is also one of the first times we see women being given the same rights as men. Complex marriage represents the hope for equal women's rights, but also a more sexually free society. After escaping Vermont, Mr. Noyes set up shop in Oneida, New York in 1848. He kept many of the same principles that had guided the Putney Association, such as perfectionism, communism, and complex marriage. But this time, he added a business side to the community. The Oneida community ran many smaller enterprises that made products both for internal use and to bring to market. Among these were handmade animal traps, silverware, silk embroidery, and canned fruit. It is in this endorsement of craftsmanship and artisanry that we see the American fear that this new age of industry would eliminate the place of artisans in American society. The Oneida community grew to 306 members by the year 1879, but a combination of scrutiny by the law and a power struggle between Noyes' son and senior members of the community brought the community to an end by 1881. Nowadays, the only thing left of the Oneida community is a fairly successful silverware company and an interesting way to study the changing paradigms of American society during the 1800s. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching.